Don't like the game? I don't like the game either. All right, what I like to do, guys, is I like to show you how to find the slope from a graph and from a table. Uh, I'm going to give you guys two different kind of methods. If you guys remember that what we use our definition for slope is the slope is the ratio. So it's a comparison between the change of y over the change in x. And what I'm talking about the change in y values over the change in x values. So uh, over here, I was given this point. This is uh, 0, 2. And this point was 3, 6. So if given a graph, if I want to find the change in the values, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go ahead and um, find the slope. I'm going to have to find out how they change in the y's and the x. So remember, a point is always given in a form x and y form. All right? Now, on that x and y form, um, you know that x is first and y is second. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, well, from, if I went from 2 to 6, how did that change? And a lot of times you guys are going to think, well, what does change mean? How are you going to figure that out? Well, what you're going to have to do is when I'm looking at change, I'm saying, all right, if I had $10 one day and I had $2 the next day, how much did my money change? You say, well, it changed by $8, right? You had, your difference was $8 was the difference. So when you think about change, what I did was 10 minus 2 to get 8. So I'm doing a subtraction problem. So the exact same thing. If I want to find out what is the change in my y, I'll write slope is the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y is 6 minus 2, because we're going to find the difference between those two, and then 3 minus 0 equals 4 over 3. So therefore, the slope for this line is 4 thirds. Now, a second way you can do this is, let's say you're having trouble with that algebraically, and you want to find it. You kind of want to see how it's going to look on a graph. Well, what you can do is you can go and create your slope triangle. And by creating the slope triangle, you say, well, how far did it change in the y direction? That is up and down. We can say, if I went to 2 and I go to 6, I went 4 units this way. And from here to here, I go over 3 units. So again, you could do slope equals 4 over 3. Now, when given a table, it's a little bit difficult because I don't have a graph that, that I can kind of visually see how it's changing. So for a graph, what you're purely going to have to use is, uh, is use the points. So remember, here's a y value and here's a y value. Here's an x value and here's an x value. So between those two x values, I'm going to have to find the difference or the change. So again, to find the change between the two y values, I can say the slope is the change in the value. So from here to here, what was the change? Well, I'll do 2 minus a negative 6, and then 5 minus 3. Now, this is a different problem. And remember, it's a ratio, so it's one over the other. So 2 minus a negative 6, those both become positive equals 8, over 5 minus 3 is 2. Therefore, my rate of change is equal to 4 or a slope. They're interchangeable. All right? Now, if you want to see, well, is that make sense? Can you use it for any points? And when you're given a line, you can pick any two points. So if I was just going to do these next two, uh, if I was going to do these next two, I could do 10 minus 2 and 7 minus 5. And what I get is 8 over 2, which equals to 4. So it doesn't matter what two points you're going to pick you're always going to get the same rate as long as it is a linear equation. So that's how you find the slope from a graph and a table.